I hope this will start loading up again soon. There we go. Hello everyone, it's me again, Mike Farm. I'm continuing on with part two of my uh, Rally of Guanji uh, caricature. Uh, yesterday when I left it, uh, we were just coming into the shading section of it, so bringing down the shading, adding the detail as I went along, so I was just about coming up to the leg and the tail section. I'll probably start adding in the actual... Um, cartoon elements of me in Guanji's mouth. So let's continue. So where was I? So I was doing all the working on the detail. In fact, one thing I did say I was going to change was the nodules on Guanji's back. They don't need to be as dark as what they are there. Let's get those rubbed out. So the if you're not familiar with Guanji's design, they're not too dissimilar from uh, scoots that you would get on the back of uh, crocodiles and alligators. But they didn't need to be as dark as what they were. And I think that was because my pencil was blunting at that particular point. Just get those in a bit better. All right, so darken some of these larger scales off. So, how's everyone doing today? Hopefully, everyone's doing okay. Everyone's uh, abiding by the quarantine rules about staying inside and only going out for extreme circumstances like shopping. I was reading um, an article the other day about how people were burning down 5G phone masts because they believe... Um, and I'm not even sure if this is a, a theory or a hypothesis or what, but the theory is that um, the phone waves from a 5G phone mast can exacerbate or um, transmit the coronavirus. And I don't know where people get these ideas from. I'm not quite speed on people's... Um, um, it's, uh, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, tinfoil hat theories, that sort of thing. I, I can see the 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 worry that if there's a a theory out there that a virus can be transmitted via anything, people should be. Done. But when it comes down to things like radio waves or phone, um microwaves it's like mm, i'm not sure about this guys do you think that's a wise course of action i just don't know especially when it comes down to if you need to call emergency service services and your phone actually w operates by 5g then you've just kind of like shut yourself in your own foot but i don't know i'm not uh clued up with these sort of things I'm very much the uh, the nineties mindset of you know if the authorities tell you that you need to stay inside and lock your doors, then that's exactly what you do. But I don't know. So, so what you'll probably notice that I end up doing is I'll work so much onto an area, go back and forth, back and forth, and it's just something that. I find that works well with me. Sometimes I'm not sure about something, so I'll go away from it, work, focus on another area, and then come back again. Um, I don't know if that's like the thing that other people do, whether that's just unique to myself, but uh, it seems to do me well. Yeah. Uh, when I really kind of pack in those scales on the jaws. I 
really wish I could have my the photos that I took at the um, Dinosaurs Harryhausen and Me exhibition a few years ago. Uh, I got some really good photo references of the uh, Guanji hard resin model and uh, it gave me some lovely details on areas like the head and the arms and the underbelly. Unfortunately, what I'm probably going to need to do, ask them to press A4 or A3 in size and then put them into a binder so that if I ever need to reference anything like that, again, I can just go straight to the binder because normally I use references on my computer. And if you're not live streaming, using the computer is fine. But then the moment you start live streaming, all of a sudden, I mean, particularly with this laptop as well, all the processing power goes into maintaining that stream. And even then, sometimes with this current stream, the quality isn't all that great because the broadband in this area is just shocking. So it's uh, it's quite tricky. It's just easier, again, to refer back to something that's physically in front of you rather than uh, across the other end of the table well so far it's not doing too bad i mean it'll look like with any caricature it as long as it emulates the character that you portray then that's all that matters it doesn't have to be an exact copy Yeah, I wasn't too happy with that browse, so I think if I just darken that tone there, bring this around more. And then to sweep down there we go right So I'm going to go in with a finer pencil um, using one of these to really bring out some of those uh, finer details on the hands and the claws because this uh, pencils it's okay for kind of like the broader strokes or the thicker lines around the edge but when it comes to the finer details it's a little bit cumbersome. I need to uh, change that out later on I'll get the majority of the image in and I can work on that later on. Now I want to make that pop a little bit more so I just need to darken that edge up a bit more. And swing it around just underneath here. There we go. Mars that I've got so far and uh, every time I do a render the majority of it comes out okay but when it comes to any of the dark shots it looks too pixelated which is strange considering that the original images are uh, HD quality and you can actually quite see a lot of the detail so once I, if I can't rectify that then I'll give you a call and um, you can have a look at the footage that I've got so far but I, I want to try and get it as looking as best as quality as possible before I start sharing with uh, folk like yourself because I've shared it with a few other people before now and especially that it hasn't got uh, the score or the sound effects on board so when you're uh, looking at stuff you're not quite sure what's going on without the sound so I want to get the sound 
in there as well. But apart from that, yeah, everything else is not too bad. Um, we, me and uh, my wife Willow are uh, currently debating what to do with our hand fasting in um, in August with everything that's going down with the coronavirus. We're wondering whether we want to postpone it for next year or even the year after, depending on what the availability is. Because the, the original plan was is that because Willow's Will and on mine birthdays are both in August, we were going to have it in the middle. But with the way that the current pandemic is at the moment, and people are already saying that they're going to start shutting down festivals and, and such in August, we're wondering whether we should postpone it until another date, which isn't a problem for us because it would just mean it gives us more time to save up for paying other things off. But at the same time, we've already waited about two years to do this and we don't want to cancel it because then it'll just mean that some crud ton of money that's gone down the drain. Um, but then we don't really want to wait another couple more years. So we're just uh, trying to work out the ins and outs of it all at the moment. But hopefully we'll, uh, we'll figure something out. It's not the end of the world, that's for sure. And how's yourself? Are you doing okay? Are you uh, keeping yourself busy? And how's your animation coming on as well? At least you've uh, got access to do it. Pretty, <laughs> pretty annoyed in some ways that the university had to close. I couldn't uh, carry on with mine. Those are more micro scales in there. Oh, tell me about it, mate. I, I've been procrastinating more this past two weeks than what I have in the past year. It's like trying to learn to live stream through uh, Streamlabs, um, OBS and OBS Studio. I was so geared up for working with those and when the moment it started just having issues trying to broadcast there was a part of me that was just like oh in that case and if i can't do it i just won't bother because i'd rather i'd rather do something like this professionally than do it like this where it just comes off as amateurish and uh yeah it's like those two weeks just stretched out for such a long time it was just so frustrating but once I get into it, I'm not too bad. And especially if I can keep talking to people as well, because because I can't play music properly, because it one, it, it reduces my um, streaming quality down quite substantially. But it also comes across quite muffly because it's coming through this, uh, the microphone rather than through um, the computer itself when it's recording and streaming. So, uh, yeah, I'd rather just have it no music at all basically but in doing so means then it becomes a very dull <laughs> live stream so it's easier for talking to people but no it's good that you you're keeping active and uh cracking on with things in some form or another it's like there's the one thing that as bad as the situation is out there at least in, in some ways it's good for us because we can just do things in our own personal spaces we're already creatives anyway whereas um people like willow it's like she wants to be creative but then when she puts pen to paper she just gets these mental blocks so she can't do anything and i can imagine a lot of people are probably in the same situation where just sitting and watching tv is okay nine to five but then the moment you get your tv um permits for like 24 hours a day suddenly you just realize that uh 
it's not as entertaining as what you once thought it was. Uh, I'll just drop my rubber. Where's it gone? There we go. Eey. So, uh, let's see. I'll finish off the rest of this leg. Then we'll just start finessing the scale details. So I'll, I'll, I'm pretty sure I mentioned this on yesterday's stream, but I'll mention it today as well. Um, what I plan to do with this drawing is once the uh, the pencil details done, um, I'm going to photograph this and then take it into um, Adobe Photoshop and colorize the drawing that way rather than doing it with a pencil crayon or pen and ink or anything. Uh, I'm, I'm still in two minds whether I actually want to pen this version in, but then I kind of like the pencil shading, so I'm not 100% sure, really. It's always a bit of a dilemma for myself to um, to decide on what to do with these sort of things. Um, let's fill scales in. So what I've noticed with these um, scales in Guanji's leg is that they're not exactly true scales. It's almost like it's um, folds of skin almost. So they don't have a, an edge. They just kind of like blend into the rest of the uh, rest of the leg. Or the rest of the skin, I should say. Um, but they are quite pronounced, but they're also rounded edges. Whereas I've actually drawn them here with a sharp edge, so I might actually just uh, go into those a bit more, round, try and round them off in the uh, shading between the leg and the skin. Because you want to try and get that um, sort of like tiered, um, sort of like tooth quality to them. But you don't want to lose them as a, uh, as basically just like a, a raised scale.
this thing there. Yeah, I might have to go with a small pencil here because this is actually getting really difficult to, uh, to see. So just to give you a bit of a, a hint on this as well, um, if you ever get any of these sort of like um, pencils where this, you can just basically pump it in and out like so, um, in order to make sure you get a really fine edge, you're best using a knife and just basically scrape away at the edge. And then you'll get a really nice fine point so you'll be able to in areas where you, your thicker pencils can't quite get into those nooks and crannies it will really make those areas pop out the only problem is though is that because it's a very fine tip then it's quite vulnerable to breaking so the trick is is to not apply too much pressure to it but to repeat going over the same area again and it'll make those fine edges really stand out. And I would also recommend using a HB variant for that as well. Um, the soft, softer brushy, uh, soft brushes, softer pencils like the 6Bs and what have you, as good as you can get the darker tones with those, they work on a larger frame. So because this is A4, you need to find alternative methods to uh, to doing such similar things. Otherwise, you just end up uh, making a mess of it, basically. Right, so now we get to the fun part here. Uh, so I want to give Guanji his... Uh, Distinctive tail scales. And I struggled a lot with the um, with the logo variation of uh, Guanji, so I don't know how this is going to turn out for the caricature, but we shall soon find out. This might work quite nicely, might fail miserably. Okay. And just leave that one there. So need I'll bring that up. A bit further, actually, and add one more in. Do, 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 do. 
All right, okay. So, now comes the fun part. Um, so, the trick with the Guanji's tail in the, from the reference photo that I'm looking at anyway, is that you need to highlight the uh, intermittent scales breaking up the tail, but then these parts that raise um, the segments in that particular section aren't connected to this initial edge. So what you want to do is you want to sort of like cap them off just before they get to the edge. And that gives you your undershading. And then when it comes to your patterning at the top, you don't fill in that area. So hopefully it should give the illusion of Guanji's tail segments. I need to sharpen this pencil again. There we go. So when I'm working on this area, this is probably going to take a lot of working, reworking, erasing, reworking again. Hi, we're all about art. How are we doing? And thank you for the kind comment, regardless if it's just one word of wow. <laughs> I'm a very humble person. I will take any compliment I can get. In fact, just to give people who are watching an idea if they've not watched the previous stream um the last stream was about just over two hours to get to this stage um i'm not sure how long i've been streaming for. so i've been streaming for 30 minutes and all I've basically done is worked on the, the leg and i'm now working into the tail um but the initial sketch that i made originally took about say maybe about an hour or so because a lot of it is down to just like figuring out proportion um deciding on what the character's going to look like uh, whether it's going to have any kind of like um expression on it because well, guanji though he doesn't have much emotion his body language tells the emotion so a good example of that would be when he sees the um, the pterosaur on the floor and he's trying to decide between picking up the carcass and going for the professor. If you really study his body language, you can really see the like the thought process that's going in there. It's not just a simple case of he sees the carcass, looks over, and then heads straight over to the professor. And that's kind of what I wanted to do with this drawing. So I wanted it to be that he's literally just let into the frame has grabbed my uh, very um, I, there's not really much of a story on, on this image but the idea is that I've been working at my desk sculpting away Guanji has come in and devoured me in one bite leaving my arms still working on the sculpts that I'm doing because I'm so focused on the uh, on the work and when it was originally going to be planned for a uh, um, a screening cue card to say back uh, gone to lunch that's the, uh, the story that it tells so it's not exactly uh, a landmark of an image but you know it does the job right okay so i need to move some bits where's my rubber disappeared to again oh, put these things down then i'll lose them five minutes later there we go there we go. All right, so 
we just need to remove the sketch marks. I need to do the other side as well, don't I? So I don't know if this would be of interest to anyone. Um, in one of these live streams, I was thinking about doing an episode on how to make your own sculpting tools. So go through my own toolkit, talk about the tools that I have that are both bought and uh, made. But because I know there are other people that do it better than I do, I wasn't sure whether it would be of interest to anyone. So if it's of interest to you, uh, feel free to make a comment in the description or in the chat even. The chat's always a good one. Um, and yeah, and let me know because if it's, if it's inter of interest to people, I've got some spare bits and pieces that I can use to make um, new tools. And I've been looking to make new tools for a while, so it's, uh, it is very much needed. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, no problem, mate. Don't worry about it. It's not like you've missed much. Unless it was a particular response to a question, which in that case, then fair enough. Right. Let's tidy these up. And I can go into detail in the shading. How's your uh, girlfriend, by the way, Angus? Is she doing okay? Because I'm guessing that uh, you're both not living together. Unless I've, uh, I've missed a post from you. Right. Okay, so... Now get down to I'm glad to hear it, mate. Now, thinking about it, he's got those um, scoops down the back of his tail, actually, so I need to integrate those in. So, uh, they technically go over his hip, so what I might do is... Just carry them along here. So they're just peeking over the edge, but not exactly jumping out. And then I remove this. Just have them come 
coming back in. Um, I think, I think that was Arthur Howard that did that as well. I'm not sure, you know, thinking about it. I know he did quite a lot in the, um, in the Natural History Museum in terms of the sculpts, but I, I can't remember if that was the same sculpt of his. In fact, I don't even know when he officially uh, retired at the Natural History Museum, because I know he did the Invicta dinosaurs. And of course he did all the, um, the Ray Harryhausen variants as well, which um, I wish I'd asked Ray more about him at the time because I, I know that there wasn't exactly um, things were left on the best terms with each other. But I just, you know, it's one of those things where you want to pay your own respect to an artist. But when you know that there's been a feud between the two of them, you don't know who effectively to side with ethically. So it's like, I wish I'd learned more about that. It would be interesting to know kind of like the history. All oh, right, okay then. Yeah, double check for us if you can, mate. It'd be interesting to see. Is it the one um that was it's like a creamy browny top with a white underbelly? I think if it's the if it's the one you're talking about, that's the one I remember. But then saying that, I've, it's been a while since I've been to the Natural History Museum. I need to go back again. Obviously, once the virus has uh, been lifted and quarantine and what have you. And of course, when I've actually got an income of sorts, that's the other thing. Because it's one thing to say, I'd really like to go to these places. But when you have zero income coming in, it's a bit more tricky to get out to places. And I am not asking for um, handouts from the wife considering she works with the NHS but if everything goes to plan once the quarantine's lifted we can get our own house especially one with a place I can actually make stuff properly of a proper work studio so i can do live streams on um uh amateur fabrication and things like that then uh it might open up more opportunities for me uh oh john holmes oh my god you know I don't think I've ever seen anything of his work apart from that one sculpture, you know. I remember reading his name in, in primary school and thinking, oh, yeah, I need to look him up. And this was like pre-internet, so trying to find books on him was like next to nothing. I'll have to look him up again. I really like that T-Rex of his. Right, okay. That's looking a bit better. Just do divide there. So these I'll probably detail up a bit later on. I'm just getting them into position for the moment. Right, so uh, that's a go on, G. So he has his detail on his scales up to the very last plate, and then it seems to smooth out for his uh, ground base scales. I forget the name of the scale. I used to know at one point. It's a problem when you get old, you forget. <laughs> I keep one of them calling them scoots, but they're not. The scoots are the things on the on the top of the 
body, not the uh, the base. There we go. I have to, yeah, I'll definitely have to have a look. Is he on um, vintage dinosaurs? These photos of his and what have you, or are they on um, elsewhere on on Facebook? I'm going to assume it'll be one of the dinosaur groups that I'm actually in. Okay, I'll definitely check that out then. And if anyone's uh, listening to this uh, post or uh, pre-launch, I would definitely recommend that you join the Facebook group Vintage Dinosaurs. There are some amazing pieces that get published on there from uh, fans. And some of them, you look at them and think, wow, that individual had a really novel concept for that particular dinosaur and then it starts making you question was that their own input or was this based on uh, evidence at the time or you know it's just it's crazy how one design uh, sorry not one design, one evidence of a prehistoric creature can spawn so many interpretations whether it be based on personal opinion, evidence, or vice versa, it's really incredible. All right, now I want to make this. Tail segment a bit more, obviously. So that comes out there like so. Then here, it's like you're going against the grain because you automatically want to start drawing inwards, but the scales, because they're protruding outwards, just having to peel it back slightly. In some ways, it's almost kind of like a... Um, like a Godzilla's tail, so whereas Godzilla's tail comes down and effectively balls that um, lesser in size, uh, Guanji's tail is like a rattlesnake um, segmentation sort of thing. So it's kind of like it, it goes in, juts out, and then goes in, juts out, and so forth. Um, if you actually look at a rattlesnake's tail, you probably get the idea of what I'm trying to uh, get at. And do a bit of cleaning up in a moment. Okay, so just clean the rubber off of my jeans. Got a nice white rubbery finish. And then go back in for a bit of tidy up. There's one thing that I think is very important for 
drawing apart from the layers is the opportunity you can because if you wait until you get too much detail on there's a good uh, possibility that you're going to end up removing that detail and I know that sounds silly for the people, those of us who draw on a regular basis, but if there's someone, oh, sugar, there goes my pencil. If there's someone that's uh, viewing this that's uh, new to drawing or is very much the novice, then I'm hoping by watching this, it'll uh, not only show how long it takes for these sort of drawings to be made. But I'll also uh, fact that claw needs to be trimmed. So any marks on this that pencils have left um, too much ingrained material on, I'm not too worried about them because when I take a photograph, I'll be digitally removing those inconsistencies. All right. Okay, okay. So, a bit more on the tail there. <sighs> right. Okay, do okay then. Right. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry on the belly scales texture down to the base of the tail now i don't know whether that's genuine on the actual model but it will carry off the uh the personality of those scales continuing on rather than just ending with something that's smooth it's just making them look as if they're a continuation There we go. Now, one thing I won't mind asking people is what music does everyone listen to? Is it going to be uh, sort of like pop music, heavy metal, classical, anything like that? I'd like to get some suggestions for future listening. Yeah, no problem, Angus. Thanks very much for joining in. And 
like I said, hopefully I'll be in touch soon with a, a rendered version of uh, Wildlife on Mars at some point. So you take care of yourself. And if I don't see you on the future stream, then uh, I'll speak to you soon. Because I've been, in terms of music, I've been really getting into uh, classical, which is quite strange considering that if you asked me 10 years ago, would I ever considered listening to classical music? I would have said never. It bores me. But um, I found a YouTube channel. Um, I don't know how you pronounce his name. I think it's Russo, I think it is. Um, and uh, he's he does like... Um, he does piano music specifically, but he does a bit of uh, classical, but he also does like pop covers as well. So he's done like his own version of Bohemian Rhapsody and things like that. And they're absolutely fantastic. But his classical stuff, I don't know. I've, some of them I found really, really moving. I mean, the, the ones that I know off the top of my head are things like Claire de Lune and um, Hall, of, um, Hall of the Mountain King. But um, he's introduced me to Chopin, and I can't remember the particular track that really kind of like um, bowls me. And yeah, it's just, I listen to it, and it's just so hauntingly beautiful. But the funny thing is, is that I was watching a, a friend of mine do a live stream of uh, Jurassic World Evolution, um, and the music actually fit the gameplay so perfectly and i found that it actually has a lot of if you put that music over a lot of um like wildlife uh shots or you know like savannah shots things like that it fits so majestically it just gives a bit more emphasis to the um to the picture so i'm starting to wonder whether i should listen to more classical work now than what I originally did. Uh, so yeah, it was uh, it's quite it's quite interesting, and I, I would never have put myself pegged myself for um for a classical person at all. So when I think classical, I always think like Beethoven or uh, Mozart, and apart from the obvious tracks, there's nothing really there that that grabs me. But the one ones from Japan have been like in fact I can't remember who it was now. it might have been Japan as well actually uh, who did um, oh what was it called I think it's Russian Rhapsody I think if you go to the um, if you type into Google uh, Warner Brothers um, Daffy's Rhapsody it's that sort of that sort of thing so it's uh, it's quite enjoyable to watch see right now i need to start filling those darker tones
one thing I just need to do for a second. drink. There we go. <coughs> mm. Oh, some good cordial. Fine pencil. Hey Liam, how are we doing?
see. Just want those to stick out a little bit more. I think we need a sharper edge to them. I don't know whether I want to or not. I might go in this with a uh, smudging technique just to kind of like diffuse some of those harder edges. I'm not entirely sure just yet. So those is the caricature. There's a part of me that's like, it's juggling between making it realistic and uh, and uh, a complete cartoon. But seeing this as an illustration, it's it could go on more uh, um, realistic side, I suppose. Let's see what how I feel about it as I progress further on. It's a bit more refinement there, I think. In fact, that needs, those need to be a lot closer to the edge. Right, so. Mm. 
All right. I think I will give my needs a fine reg on it. Uh, I'm going to do this. Let's try it. Okay. Yeah, there we go.
hands and the feet. I'll drop my bubber again. Yes. Oh. Oh. That's right.
starting to get there now. Um, I think I might have overdone the shading on the tail a little bit too much. Um, compared to the rest of the body, it looks a bit overkill now. Um, I wonder if I can take that back a bit.
Position. Okay. Yeah, that's better. We should have done that sooner, yeah. It's not as in the way of the light then. <sighs> okay, where are we looking?
Let's just have a quick check on Discord. Uh, okay, no one's popped up there. Facebook. <sighs> Excuse me. Oh. <sighs> You've got a little stretch, don't you, from time to time? Bear with me, folks. I'm just trying to arrange a commentary um, schedule. Ding, 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 ding,
Consistency Oh. All right. Um
So, that's two hour mark. Sorry if this is getting very dull for those of you who are uh, what. It's uh, difficult to talk about things when you've got no one to respond with. Uh, let's see. So what I'm going to try and do is um, do a forced perspective. So making the the rarer items dark, uh, sorry, lighter compared to the uh, medium and uh, foreground items. So the leg I'm going to try and make darker to the middle leg, uh, to the sorry, to the rear leg, but making the tail even lighter compared to the middle leg. Um, it's a perspective technique done by um, Gustav Doré, who inspired Wills O'Brien, Ray Harryhausen, and quite a few, many other artists in the modern era as well. Um, and the idea is that the, the foreground is darker, but then the further you go back, the lighter the background gets. Um, and it works well for um, uh, perspective of, of um, natural surroundings like valleys and mountains and such. But when you're dealing with a carrot, so I don't know if it quite works the same, but we'll give it a try. Uh, let's just do that chord, don't I? Thank you. 
Oh, right.
Hmm. Let's try doing another share again. See what happens. Uh, let's think of another uh, hashtag. Um, Let's see if that does anything. Now, how's the leg look? So it wants to shade up that leg a little bit. Here we go. Thank you. 
Ooh. Ooh, Jesus. <laughs> All right, if I can make it for another 30 minutes, I'll end the stream there, I think.
Oh, I think I want to wrap up in a few minutes, actually. I'm starting to get a bit hungry. Right, I think <sighs> yeah, there we go. I think that will do for the moment. Um, I'm still going to work on the shading side of things because I'm not quite happy with how the tail looks in the um, in the upper torso, but um, it's getting there. It's slowly getting there. I mean, these things take time; they don't happen overnight. But uh, hopefully, in the next video, part three. I'll be working on the, um, the actual character side of things. And, uh, yeah, we'll see how it looks. So thank you for those who have joined me today, and thanks for the likes. Um, make sure to subscribe and to uh, hit the bell for future notifications when I'm online for doing live streams. Uh, failing that, make sure you follow me on Twitter and uh, Instagram at Mike Tham, or you can find me at Free Arm Creations. And hopefully I'll see you in the next stream. Okay, catch you later.